It's time to find balance and inner peace in your life. Join us in the online yoga course with Sadhguru. Sign up to experience the transformative benefits of yoga. The link is in the description. Mantras without knowing the meaning? Mantras have no meaning. See, there are two dimensions to a mantra. Mantras are not supposed to have any meanings in the tradition. There are different types of mantras. Unfortunately, the mantras which are normally known, they have given them meanings so that people can involve. Because there are lots of idiotic people who cannot involve with anything that's meaningless. That is why they miss the sunrise, the sunset, the moon, the full moon, everything they miss because it's meaningless. What is the meaning of a full moon? There is no meaning, only if you're in love it means a lot. Otherwise, what is it? Nothing. It's not meaningful means, it is not useful. So, all the idiots on the planet, will do only meaningful things, yes? Because they have no intelligence to recognize life and the many facets of life. It is not because you have attached a stupid meaning to it, it exists. It exists beyond you. It existed before you, it will exist beyond you. It is not because you give it a meaning, it's become useful or not useful. So the stupid in the world, will do meaningful things. They may be intellectual, but life stupid, they have no life sense. If you have life sense, you will see it is the most meaningless things which really set you on fire, isn't it so? No? So they created two kinds of mantras. One larger set of mantras which have no meaning, just pure sound. You will see this in our music also. The Yaksha program happened just now and many of our people who are looking for meanings were thoroughly bored because they're doing alap for forty minutes, ah. <laughs> Say something, say at least Shiva Shambhu, something. <laughs> no, ah, <laughs> They're not getting the point because it's about the sound. Why so? sounds so much more important than a word which is a meaning. Meanings are made up in human minds. Sound is the essence of creation. If you touch the sound, you're touching creation. If you touch a word, you're just going into the psychological structure of human beings. The psychological structure of human beings is… Uh, is essentially a certain kind of madness. We can enjoy it, we can use it, but essentially it's a certain kind of illusory setup. Sound is a… is a fundamental aspect of creation. If you have mastery over sound, you have mastery over creation itself in a certain way, because creation is just a complex amalgamation of sounds. It's the blueprint of creation, but meanings are human things. You know, the same words mean different things in different languages even in India. You know this. The same word means different things because it's all made up. The sound is not made up. Sound is part of the creation. Sound is part of the existence. Sound is part of making the creation happen. Right now, the whole creation is reverberating in a certain way. You cannot hear it, it doesn't matter. But the words and meanings are a human making. It is meaningful only as a conspiracy. When I say a conspiracy, do you hear what the cricket is saying? What is he saying? You don't know, but they're talking. They're also like you. Some of them are just making sound, just doing alap. 
Just sound, simply enjoying the sound. Enjoying the creation in one sense means enjoying the sound of it. If you don't have a keenness to listen, if you don't have a keenness to pay attention, you cannot enjoy any aspect of creation, actually. You will only enjoy psychological patterns in your head. So this is the reason why most human beings want to speak, most of the time they want to be talking. Not because they have something to say, because they have to find meaning. Simply, either silence or sound, both are too overwhelming. That is why when we say spiritual process, first thing is silence. If you are uh, psychologically very stable, you may say, okay, thirty days silence, sixty days silence. If you are psychologically fragile, we say, okay, three days. Three days also people go crazy, we'll say, okay, half a day silence, up to noon silence, after that you blabber. They usually make it up afternoon. Those of you who talk a lot, you know, meaning is meaningless. You can simply talk. A whole lot of people are experts, they can simply speak without any meaning. They have understood the importance of sound. They can go on talking without making any meaning. Now, if you were a bird, we would pardon you. If you were this one, we would be okay. Or if you're a musician, you would be okay to make meaningless sounds. If you're speaking, you're expected to make some meaning. So mantra is not to be spoken, it is to be chanted. Chanting means it's a… chant is of the sound, not of the meaning. Meaning is of speech. Meaning is of the word, written word and spoken word. Meaning does not belong to a chant. A chant is simply a sound, a reverberation. So if you… the… if you do not know the meaning, it's the best way to chant, if you ask me. Simply, absolutely involved with the sound and saying it. But first of all, what you are uttering, is it a mantra or is it a bhajan or is it a sankirtan? You must look at it. If it's a mantra, mantra means a pure sound, it need not have any meanings. You can give it whatever meaning you want to start with, because without meaning you cannot be involved. But once you know how to be involved, you should not give it any meaning. Om Namah Shivaya does not mean you go on imagining one man sitting there on top of a mountain with something, something happening around him, no. Initially, if that's the only way you can be involved, you can look at the Shivakasi picture, okay? Once you know how to be involved with the sun, you get rid of the man, he's not needed, he's a disturbance. <laughs> I'm telling people in Sanyama, they're chanting. Their question is, if Shiva comes, I'm calling so many times, if he comes, if he comes, just ignore him. Because that's not the thing about mantra. The mantra is that you involve yourself in the sound because you yourself, your physical thing is a certain pattern of sound. Right now you're trying to make yourself into a different pattern of sound so that this sound becomes an excess point to the larger sound which you call as the cosmos. A larger arrangement of sounds is cosmic in nature. Now, you use a certain key sounds in a particular arrangement, you know. In the safes, the locks are called a combination lock. So you have to just get it right for it to open. So mantra is a combination. You get the right combination, right, it will open up a doorway into creation. It is not the meaning. Whatever meaning you give it, however high or low you think the meaning is, meaning is a made-up thing. It's a psychological process. It has no existential meaning. No word has any existential meaning. Right now, whatever English words we're uttering doesn't mean anything to the trees. But if you… you can… actually these experiments have been done. If you sit here and sing beautifully, I cannot do that, but <laughs> if you sit here and sing really ah, properly, the trees… the tree is full of flower, it could be because of yaksha. Okay, the rains have aided it, but don't… do not discount the power of the sound. Do not discount the power of the sound, it has influence on everything.
or if you chant a mantra, the tree may respond to it. If you sing music, it may respond to it. If you just generate a thought, it may respond to it. But if you speak, it will not respond. This is true with the tree, this is true with the divine. See, look at it this way, because uh, you can't really figure what all these people want. Look at yourself. Right now you're thinking you want to become an engineer. Let's say right now I make you an engineer, this moment. Then you're thinking you need a job, I got your job. Then you're thinking you need a promotion, I got you. Then you think you need an award, I got you. Then you think you need wealth, I got you right now. Everything that you can dream of, I got you right now. What do you want now? <laughs> yeah, I can do that for you <laughs> Let's say I want a job. Huh? I'm striving for a job right now. Yes. Now, we are… we are looking at the end game, right? <laughs> you got everything you wanted right now, things that you can imagine, things that you cannot imagine right now, everything you got right now. What do you want right now? I wouldn't know what to do. Just look at it, huh? See, when you say this, what it means is, all you want in your life, what you're seeking is struggle. To get a job, it must take three years, then you will feel, wow, I got a job. <laughs> Look at all the people who have good jobs. Look at them walking on the street. Are they going blissfully, dripping ecstasy? <laughs> Hello? Miserable guys, they're getting blood pressure, going to work. They're getting all kinds of ailments, they're freaking out, yes? So what do you want? Is there a girl here? What do you want? I don't know anymore <laughs> That's good. I do not know, I like that <laughs> because actually you do not know. Everybody keeps fooling themselves at every step in their life, thinking, what I want is I want to become an engineer, I want to become an engineer, it'll keep you busy for five, seven years. <laughs> then I want job, job, it keeps you busy for another one or two years. Then I want this kind of job, that kind of job, that keeps you busy for another eight, ten years. I want that much money, that much wealth, that keeps you busy for another twenty-five years. I want this kind of girl, that kind of girl, that kind of boy, uh, that keeps you busy for a few years. Then children will come, I want my child to become this, this, this. Well, we are preparing for your funeral <laughs> You need to understand, you need to understand just this. Right now, you may be giving all kinds of contexts to your life, but essentially, what you call as my life right now is just a certain combination of time and energy. Yes? As you sit here, time is rolling away for all of us. Can you roll it back? You're an engineer? Can you roll it back? Yesterday was not fruitful, so I'll roll it back. Can you? It's rolling away for all of us. As we sit here, what is ticking away here is not the clock. What is ticking away is our life, isn't it? Since we came and sat here, you're half an hour closer to your grave. It doesn't matter how young you are, you are getting there, isn't it? Yes sir, no. So it's a certain amount of time and that time, Nobody can manage because it rolls at the same pace for everybody. You do something, you don't do anything, you sleep, you're awake. 
you are happy, you are unhappy, do whatever the hell you want, it just keeps rolling mercilessly, isn't it? So there is energy that you call as life. This you can pitch it at different levels. If you are like this, I'm talking about the classroom expression, you know <laughs> If you're like this, twenty-four hours feel like thousand years. <laughs> but have you seen on a certain day you're very happy? Twenty-four hours, poof, went off like a moment? Yes or no? So, time is a very relative experience in individual subjective experiences. If you're joyful, if you live hundred years, it feels like a few moments, it's gone. Only miserable people will have a long life <laughs> Because if you're miserable, you'll always feel life is too long that you'll want to cut it short. But if you're joyful, the possibility that a human being holds, before you look around, it's over, really. But what possibility this carries? So what you need to manage is your energies, because life is a certain amount of energy, it's not limitless, but it can be enhanced. If you function at one level of energy, what you do in ten years' time, if you function at a different level of energy, the same thing you can do in one year's time. So, if both people live for hundred years, in terms of impact and profoundness of experience, one has lived for a thousand years, another has lived for hundred miserable years. So, this is all you can do. You may think right now, engineer, this one, that one, these are all limited contexts you're setting for yourself. Fundamentally as a life, it's just time and energy, isn't it? The question is what you make out of it. Do you want to make something out of it? There's no compulsion you have to make something out of it. When I say making something out of it is not a social phenomena I'm talking. What should you become in the society? That's not what I'm talking. Fundamentally, you have come here in terms of life is you want to experience life. Question is how profoundly? Right now, if people want to experience life, what are they experimenting with? they will experiment… not this, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know you guys <laughs> Or they'll experiment this or they'll experiment something else. What they will experiment is how to down your faculties. You know, uh, United States has… Uh, made marijuana legal in a few states. So when I went to a few colleges or universities, they're asking me, Sadhguru, why don't you pitch? Someone like you must legalize marijuana for us <laughs> I said, no problem, we'll make marijuana legal, cocaine legal, meth legal. What's the problem? No problem. Only thing is, why is it that you want it to be legal so that you can smoke up and come to the college, right? It's fine. But let's say you want to fly a small airplane, the pilot comes smoked up. <laughs> you want to fly with him? Uh, because the guy is already flying without the airplane. Okay, you're not getting the point <laughs> You need a major surgery and the surgeon comes smoked up. <laughs> you want the surgery? Oh no! Then you clearly understand this lowers your faculties. I want all of you to look at this. Do you believe you can enhance life by lowering your faculties? Hello? If you want to enhance this life, you must super enhance your faculties. That's the only and only way you can enhance this life. 
You cannot lower your, lower your faculties and think your life is getting enhanced. What kind of stupidity is that? Simply because it makes you a little like this. I can make you feel like this all the time, how's that? No substance, I am always like this only. Look at my eyes, I am stoned. Yeah, never touch a substance but fully stoned all the time. <laughs> because I want you to understand this, the greatest chemical factory on the planet is here. If you are a good manager of this, you can create any experience that you want from within and also heighten your faculties. If you are having an experience, even to experience that, your faculty should be heightened, isn't it? Is this the great greatest chemical factory on the planet, most sophisticated? Do you agree with me? Are they chemical engineers? <laughs> so I'm asking, how are you managing your system? What have you done? We gave you such a sophisticated machine. Have you read the user's manual at least? <laughs> no. Blindly do this and then you think pumping something is going to make this better? No. Believe me. The only and only way you can enhance this life is that your faculties are super bright. <laughs> the way you see, the way you hear, the way you smell, the way you taste and the way you touch, if this is enhanced, is life enhanced in many ways? There is much more to it. But I am saying from what you know from your experience, suppose you could see twice better than somebody who is sitting next to you, is your life enhanced? Hmm? If you could taste better than other people, is life enhanced? If you could feel better, is it life enhanced? If you could hear better, is life enhanced? On this level you understand this, but there are many other dimensions of human faculties. If you enhance this, if you sit here, you will be blissed out simply sitting here. You wouldn't want to touch any damn thing because just sitting here is the greatest experience of your life. So, about what is the end game? If you had everything, what would you want? If you had everything that you can ever dream of, everything is right here, what would you want? <laughs> you must think, isn't it? I won't supply you with an answer. If you do not invest that much thought into your, li into your life, that means you're super short-sighted. Hello? This happened to Gautama the Buddha. You heard of Gautama the Buddha? Because of some astrological prediction that his father heard that he may either become a great emperor or a great sage and he wanted him to become a great emperor, he protected this boy and put him in a separate palace where it's all luxury, everything that you can dream of, everything there, got him married to a very pretty young woman, everything on. No, he should not see any suffering. But one day he just went out. He saw one old man and he asked, why is this guy like this? Uh, you know, his chauffeur, his chauffeur or his chariot driver said, Oh, everybody becomes like that after a certain time. He said, what, me? I'm a young prince, will I become like that? Hey, yeah, everybody will become like that. <laughs> it shook him. Then he saw a man who's suffering with some kind of disease, ailment. Now, why is that guy like that? He said, it'll happen to a lot of people. Who it will hit, there is no prediction. Anybody can become ill. Most people think it happens to other people. No, it can happen to us. Hello? And then this, he saw a funeral, a dead body. What is that? He said, that is inevitable, everybody will die. Do you also know? You will also die? No, because most people believe other people die. <laughs> no, intellectually they know, but they think they are forever. No, you must be conscious, you are mortal. Mortal means you have a limited amount of time and energy. If you are always conscious about this, how would you organize your time and energy? You decide, you are conscious about it. 
If you think you are a superhuman being, you are not going to die, other people will die. All the best <laughs> it'll come. You can realize this on your deathbed and die <laughs> See, people may think this is extreme, but you must go and volunteer in a hospice or in a hospital ward where people die and you must see, it's very important, very, very important. Only then you become sensitive to life, life becomes super valuable because you know it's a limited amount of time. If you watch this, unfortunately today in the world, over eighty percent of the people when they… last moment when it comes, when they die, they are not fearful, they are not in pain, they are not in something else, they're just bewildered. A look of bewilderment comes because all their life they just lived their thought and emotion, they never lived a life. This is important, you must understand, there is a psychological reality in your head and there is an existential reality which is life. Most people are mistaking their psychological reality to be existential. Your thought and emotion has become more significant than the cosmos, isn't it? Hello? Huh? What you think, what nonsense you think and feel, has it become more important than the universe or no? This means you are making your creation more significant than the larger creation. This means you must suffer. If you don't suffer, I'll be disappointed. Yes, I will be. Because if you live… if ignorance doesn't make you suffer, then what? Then what's the use of me? <laughs> because it takes a lot to come out of the trap. What is the use of somebody striving to come out of the trap of ignorance? When people can live wonderfully in their ignorance, what is the point? What is the use of knowledge? What is the use of knowing? What is the use of enlightenment? What is the use of realization if people can live absolutely blissfully in their ignorance? What is the point? When you're ignorant, you must suffer. And I want you to know, the greatest evil right now on the planet is not evil, it's ignorance. Continue your quest for wisdom and personal growth. Explore more videos on our channel and share your journey with us.